Look at that. We are so professional here. It's almost unbelievable. So these are Kizzy's things? Yes, sir. Okie dokie. All right, so the other day you mentioned, hey, if customer X pays so much and then gets an invoice for the credit card charges, which she has to pay 30 days later, again with a credit card, aren't we doing credit card fees on top of credit card fees? The answer is yes. yes. That is called compound interest. Okay. Now, reality is whether this person, um, as we have a patient here, <laughs> whether this person pays the credit card fees separately or not, they are still paying credit card fees using compound interest because that's how credit cards charge. Okay? Now, when we first started talking about interest a few weeks ago, remember I told you that Einstein said that compound interest was the most powerful force in the universe. Okay? And this is the guy that came up with the theory of relativity. So, these printouts are from this company called Napkin Finance. I'm about to ask if you drew them. Huh? I'm going to ask if you drew them. Yeah. And the idea is they put complicated financial stuff into sort of pictures to try to uh, understand things better. Okay? So if we look at what happens up there, when the thing is a big circle, okay? Compound interest can be used either to pay someone or, like all interest, to make money, right? And the topic of today's class is hitting costs. So we're going to talk about compound interest, but from the point of view of paying, paying people, okay? Alright, we might have to we might have to put the laptop over like by the globe. Yeah, the little the little pluggy thing is sort of damaged. remember what interest is. Okay, who can help me out with interest? What is interest? And there's two points of view from interest, right? Whether we are paying it or receiving it, mm -hmm. right? So what's kind of interest that regular non-business people are accustomed to receiving? Like, like nope. No, credit cards. No, nope. to receiving, oh, not to paying. Um, Savings accounts. Right? When you have a savings account, you get some statement that says, Ooh, your thousand dollars earned zero point zero 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 one percent interest, you are ten cents richer. Right? Mm -hmm. So regular people are accustomed to receiving interest when it's like from a savings account. Also sometimes when it's from a money market account. Okay? Or you've ever heard of a certificate of deposit, C D? Mm-hmm. Okay, all those things are situations where you receive interest, okay? Okay, why would you receive interest from anybody? Why would they give you this? Why would they pay you interest? So that you use their bank? So that you use their bank or so that you, they can use your money. It's typically why it happens, okay? So, a... Lend a borrower, a borrower pays interest to a lender for 
use of money. When you put money in the savings account, what you're actually doing, though you may not realize it, is you're letting the bank use your money to invest. Okay? And because you're letting them use your money, they pay you for that. Okay. Pretty cool. How about interest? You can receive it. You can also pay it. Right? Yeah. When do you pay interest? Credit cards. Credit cards. Right? What else? Car payments. Car payments. House payments. House payments. So let's just call car payments, house payments, all those things. Let's call those loans. Right? Loans. And what is a credit card, really? It's a loan. Please. It's a loan. It's a loan that you create every time you use the credit card. So every time you buy $10 of gasoline with your credit card, what you're actually doing is creating a new $10 loan. Okay? Credit cards, by the way, is from the point of view of whom? The bank. Really, it's a debit to you to credit for them. Okay? So credit cards, loans, where else do we pay interest? That's pretty much it. Okay? Because why do you pay interest? Because a borrower, now it's you are the borrower, pays interest to a lender who's the lender this time. The house mortgage company, the car loan company, the credit card company, for use of money. Who's using the money? You are, right? To buy a TV or to buy gasoline or whatever. Okay, so we talked about interest, and this is where interest comes from, right? Mm -hmm. Shakespeare has a very famous quote, neither a lender or a borrower be. Okay? Why? Because once you start getting into this situation, now you start paying interest, and even worse, it's not really your money, and you could end up losing your car, losing your house, and all that other good stuff. However, in today's world, working without loans, credit cards, and things like this is almost impossible. Having a cash-based economy in today's world is nearly impossible. Imagine Amazon or eBay if you had to send an envelope with cash every time you bought something, right? It'd be pretty useless. Well, you won't be getting your things in two days. <laughs> That's right. It'd be pretty freaking useless. So it's pretty much Shakespeare's quote was great in the 1500s, but today it's not really possible. Now, how does interest work mathematically? Who can help me out here? Let's, <laughs> let's suppose that we borrow a quantity, and let's call that quantity P, okay? And why do we call it P? Because what do we it's call the, the quantity that you borrow? The principal amount. The principal amount. And because principal is a homonym, or I'm sorry, it's a homophone, as there's so many other words in English, which principle are we speaking of here? Not P-L-E. P-A-L. P-A-L, right? P-L-E is, I stand on principle. I will not steal. Okay, that's the principle. Principal, P-A-L, is not only the guy that runs the school, it's also the amount of money that you borrow. Because English is funny that way. <laughs> what? You borrow him. Yeah. So, let's borrow a quantity called principle. Now, we're going to pay for it at some regular interest rate that we normally do in this country called what? Right? So interest in this country, because the dollar is stable, less, is usually quoted in an annual percentage rate. Right? Mm -hmm. So interest is annual in the U.S., Okay? And in this country, we normally call it APR, which stands for? Annual percentage rate. Annual percentage rate. Okay? 
So let's suppose we have an interest, and which is an APR, and let's call that big I. Okay? Now, how do we get mathematically the payment, the little interest, the interest that we pay, say, on a monthly basis, how do we get that from these numbers? That is a very good question. And if you give me one second, I will tell you. Ah, because you can look it up. It's, it's this really long um, thing, and it's like... Um, He, I, I have it written down, it's he something. Okay, what you're thinking of, I believe, is how you calculate the regular payment of a loan. When, when, okay, so you want to know the, the how to come up with the interest amount, like how much the interest is. Yeah, yeah for that one month. It's pretty simple. Yeah. So if we call the, if we call the interest amount... If we call that little i, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. then the interest amount is equal to the amount you borrowed times the APR, right? Big I. But APR is usually annual, right? Mm -hmm. The A means, so we divide that by 12. Mm -hmm. Right? And also, they give that to you as a rate, which is a percentage, which means you also have to divide it by what? 100. 100. Okay? So if I borrow, if I borrow $5,000 at an APR of 8%, Mm-hmm. How much interest am I going to pay on the first month? We're going to take five, so a little interest, the payment of interest for the first month. So month number one is going to be 5,000, right? Times 8%, which is really 8 over 100, correct? Mm hmm Divided by 12 because 8 is for the whole year. We're only talking about one month, right? Mm -hmm. So it's one twelfth of that. So how much would we pay of interest if we borrow $5,000 for one month at an APR of 8%? $33. 33 bucks. So now we owe the lender... Five thousand dollars and thirty-three bucks. Okay. Unless, huh? Unless you don't pay it all back in the one month. Right. Now let's say we don't make any payment at all that month. Okay. And the second month now. Second month. Why would how would we calculate the amount of interest that we owe? The same way, but instead of five thousand dollars, it's going to be five thousand and thirty-three dollars. Thirty-three, because how much do we owe? Plus the five thousand that we already borrowed, right? But that would be five thousand thirty-three times eight over a hundred. And twelve. So how much do we owe the second month? Still thirty-three dollars, but more cents. <laughs> a couple more cents, right? Twenty more cents. So what was it before? Like thirty-three. Thirty-three, thirty-three. That was what it was before. And what is it now? Thirty-three, thirty-five. Okay. Thirty-three, thirty-five. Fifty-five. Sorry, fifty-five. Fifty-five. Sorry. <laughs> okay, fifty-five. And you're saying, hey, that's twenty cents. Big deal. Except if you're the credit card company, you don't have $5,000 out there. You have millions of dollars out there. And you're not charging 8%. You're charging usually closer to 16 or 20%. Okay. 
boy, that adds up really, 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 really quick. Mm -hmm. And really, what did they do during those two months? Nothing. Nothing. They just let you borrow their money. Okay? This is compound interest. It gets compounded because some or all of the interest that you owed doesn't get paid. So then the next month, the amount you owe is actually greater. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because now instead of on the third month, instead of owing 5000 and instead of owing 5033 now you're up to five thousand thirty-three dollars and fifty-five cents. Sixty, no, sixty-six dollars. Right. right now, the next month you owe five thousand sixty-six dollars and fifty-five cents, or whatever. Okay, and the month after that, you owe fifty-one hundred dollars, and the month after that, you'll owe probably around fifty-one forty, and it starts adding up very, very quickly. It's, in fact, it's called an exponential progression, okay? Something that grows linearly or proportionally will grow like this, okay? So if it started out one to one, it'll be two to two, and so on and so forth. An exponential progression will grow like this, mm -hmm. okay? Because it's going to be more interest every month that you don't pay. Right. So every single month, this number gets bigger and bigger and bigger, but a lot bigger and bigger yes. and bigger. That's like my student loan, even though they said they weren't charging me. You're still charging me. Every $60. loan in this country uses compound interest. Every yeah. single Look at my credit score. $67 added on. Right? $67 added on. So now, you say to yourself, well, how about, say, a car loan where part of it does get paid off, okay? Or a house loan or something like this. Well, let's say that we start with a house loan of $100,000, okay? And that's equal to P. And let's say that we borrow this money at... 7.5% interest APR for 15 years. Okay? Now, I happen to know that this regular payment is going to be somewhere around 750 bucks. Okay? So, month one, we pay $750 to the bank. How much goes to interest? In other words, how much interest do we owe for borrowing $100,000 for one month? It's going to be $100,000 times what, Michelle? <laughs> Seven point five divided by, by 100. By 100. Times what, Diana? 112. Yeah. Right? Because right, right. one month, right? So divided by 12. So how much did we pay of interest that first month? <laughs> how much? 625. $6? $6? No, $625. That is very common in mortgages. Your first down here. five years or so, no, in every mortgage in the world, it's just the way it works, because... This is that long. Okay? For the first four or five years, you're not really paying any principal. So how much was interest? Six twenty-five. All right, and we're just keeping it whole dollars to make life easier. It is whole dollars. Oh, okay. So seven hundred and fifty dollars is what you paid the bank. Six hundred and twenty-five dollars went to the interest. So how much did your loan get reduced? 125. 125? Yeah. 625. We paid 750, so we only actually paid $125 for it. You agree with that? Yes. Okay, so we paid off. Thank you. She doesn't know she's We paid off 125. Okay? 
That means that on month two, on month two, we have now borrowed how much money for two months? Nine, nine, nine. 100,000 minus 125, right? Mm -hmm. Because we borrowed 100,000 for one month, but on the first month we paid off 125 bucks. So in the second month we still owe 99875, right? So now our principal is 99875. Okay? So it hasn't changed squat. Right? And now if we do the interest amount in month two, what are we going to get? 99875 times 7.5 divided by 100 times 112. So interest in the second month is... No, my <laughs> Should be a little bit less than six hundred twenty-five bucks, right? Because yeah, we borrowed a little bit less. Six twenty-four twenty-one. Six twenty-four twenty-one. Okay. This is another example of compound interest because this amount of money, this amount of money, you paid interest on it in month one. And you're paying interest on it in month two. Okay, and then essentially all of this money minus a little bit, you're going to pay interest on it in month three, mm -hmm. and in month four, and in month five. The same money you're paying interest on it each and every month. Okay, it's another example of compound interest. All right, so if you are on the bank's side, they're going, like, Woo -hoo, let's right. party. This works really well. If you look at the stuff that I gave you a few weeks ago, okay, even if you borrow five thousand dollars for a few months, you still end up paying like whatever it was, five percent more or something. Typically, a loan like this, if you borrow a hundred thousand dollars, you're going to end up paying. About two hundred thousand in interest. So on top of the hundred thousand that you paid for. It. Right. So your house that you think you bought for a hundred thousand, you're really buying it for three hundred. Okay, so why am I buying a house again? <laughs> well, there's there's reasons, okay, but not the point. The point is that's what happens. Now, when you use credit card. Thank you for calling. Hello. Hello. Okay, so let's. If you use a credit card, things get even dicier because yeah, a credit card, let's say you have $5,000 in balance. Okay? And balance. In a credit card world is really just another word of saying principal. Principal. Right? Just a tricky word, that's all. Okay? And let's say you have a pretty standard credit card in this country. So it's running about 19% APR. Okay? 19% APR. Yours is 25? Okay, let's do yours as an example. That's high. 25. Just so you know, in some countries where the money is more volatile, credit cards will sometimes be 4% a month. I get charged like a fee a month. Sure, but that's different in interest, right? Because the fee is fixed. It'll be 50 bucks each month or whatever. Oh, no, it's different. Okay, then it probably is some kind of an interest. Yeah. Okay, so let's say it's 25% APR. Now, here's a kicker. Most credit card companies will tell you your minimum payment is 
your minimum payment is your minimum payment is typically somewhere in the neighborhood of one and a half percent of principal. Hmm. Somewhere in that neighborhood. So let's say that you owe five thousand dollars. What would your minimum payment be, let's say, according to them? Seventy-five dollars? Is that what you got? Because what's one and a half percent of five thousand? Yeah. Hey, don't cheat like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's one point five over a hundred divided by x over five. I mean, equal to x over five thousand, right? Remember, we talked about proportions two weeks ago. So it's five thousand times one point five divided by a hundred. Which is how much? 75 bucks, right? Genius. <laughs> X equals 75. <laughs> okay? So your minimum payment is $75. However, however, how much interest are they going to charge you for that $5,000 at 25%? Your interest is going to be what? $5,000, right? Times what? Come on, girls. Times 25. Times 25 divided by? 100. 100. And all divided by 12, right? Because that's APR. Yeah. Mine must be 2%. A lot, of, a lot of them are 2%. I, I see. I have $10. $10? Okay, where am are I? Okay, wait, what are we doing? Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. You're doing... What is the amount of interest you're going to pay because you borrowed five thousand dollars at twenty five percent APR? Point two, no, point two five. Twenty five divided by hundred, right? One hundred and four. So, how much is your interest? One hundred and four. One hundred and four. Okay. Yet, what's the minimum payment? Seventy five dollars. Seventy five dollars. And why do they do that? Because then you're going to continue getting more and more interest. Because the next month, you're going to owe more, even if you don't charge anything. But since people never keep track of this stuff, they don't know. Exactly so, right yeah, this is called compound interest. And over, and over. So here's your minimum. Here's what you're paying in interest. So next month's principal is going to be what? It'll be 5000 right? Minus the 75 that you paid, right? Plus the 104 in interest. Plus the 104 of interest that you earn, or that they earn. So your next month's principal is 5029 Why even make a freaking payment? <laughs> so that make your payment. I look at my car and it's still like 10000 Right, but that's nothing goes down. To, that's why you have to pay more towards the principal. That's why Boom. after you pay that minimum payment, you pay an extra $100. You pay an extra whatever, $10, anything. And it'll okay, I, pay, I pay an extra two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and you can go through the math with the calculation, the spreadsheet that I gave you, okay? But like Einstein said, compound interest is the most powerful force in the universe because the numbers will increase ridiculously high. You ever heard that riddle about you find the penny but it doubles every day? Would you rather have the earnings from that penny after 30 days or would you rather have $100,000 right now? You'd rather have the penny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if the penny doubles every day for 30 days, I'm going to give you that magic penny or a hundred thousand. Which one would you rather have? A penny does not make a hundred thousand in thirty days. Well, it also doesn't double every day. But if it did, it's a magical penny, okay? It's like the goose that lays golden eggs. It's a point to illustrate how compound interest is incredibly powerful. Okay. Okay. You'd rather take the penny. Okay. Can I have the magic penny now? <laughs> no. <laughs> we haven't found it yet. Just compound interest, okay? Now let's look at this handout for regular interest. I don't know where the handouts went. Hmm. 
Where's my coffee? I don't know. You lose things all the time. I know. It's so bad. Here you go. Okay, so here's your handout for regular interest. Okay? We have it already. I know you have it, but. Wait. Okay, so regular interest is the cost of borrowing money. Okay? The cost of using someone else's money. That's a good thing if you're on which side? The bank side? The bank side. The bad thing if you're on the other side, right? So if that's true, then why does everybody go to the bank? Why is our credit card so popular? Why does you want to borrow money? Why do companies look to borrow money? Why is Crossroads actively looking to borrow money? Why? Yes, it's credit, but why? Why do you care? You only care about credit because you want to get loans. Right? If you didn't care about ever getting a loan, do you care what your credit number was? No. So why would we ever want to borrow money? So we can buy really cool things. So we can buy cool things is, unfortunately, <laughs> the people in the United States' number one reason, but it's really the worst reason we could possibly have. To grow. To grow. Yes. Give me a little more. <laughs> a little more. Let's because say the more that we borrow the let's more say that borrowing spend. money to buy a Ferrari is not a good idea. No. Let's go with that. But it's buying it, but oh, borrowing it to open a business where you're going to profit on it would be good. Okay. Or let's say that you are a tool salesman. Buy more tools. You need to buy tools so you can put in your truck so that when you drive up to the auto zone or whoever the hell buys tools from you, you actually have them in your truck to sell them. And you'll make more money that way. Well, you make any money that way. How, how else are you going to sell them if you don't have it? Let's say you're the Frito-Lays guy driving your Frito-Lays truck. Or you're the vending machine guy. Right? You need the chips in the back to have stuff so that it can sell so that you can receive money. Right? The days of oh, I'm not buying that house until I have two hundred and fifty thousand dollars cash underneath my mattress. Those are so long gone. Okay? It might take you 20 years to get those $250,000 cash. Meanwhile, you've been paying rent for 20 years. So you have to do a break-even calculation, which serendipitously leads us to... Say it. The break-even one. The break-even. <laughs> okay. We talked about break even before. What is the break even point? The point where the expenses equals the revenues. When we're making just as much as we're spending. I like that, except we shouldn't use revenue, right? Income. 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 Okay, so why does it say revenues on here if you don't want me to say revenues? Because they're no, not the break even. Because they're dorkies. Okay, those people. Because those people are dorkies. Okay. Where? Break even. Like for that. There you go. Okay. Really shouldn't say revenue because is revenue important or is income important? Income. Income's important, right? Mm -hmm. However, I guess you could calculate it that way too. The break even point is where it starts to make sense to do whatever it is you're thinking of doing. Okay? Did you guys see that um, business proposal that I sent you? I haven't completely With looked. The birds. Yeah, I haven't completely looked it over. Did you see the break-even graph? 
I did not get a chance to completely read it. Okay. Now, why don't you guys stay right there? I'll go print out the break-even graph and review this stuff that we just talked about, okay? Okay. okay. If you really want to be cool, figure out how much a penny that doubles every day is worth after 30 days. Every 30 days? No, after 30 days. No. Okay, you were right. I was wrong. <laughs> yeah, how much is it worth? Five hundred and thirty-six million eight hundred and seventy thousand. Can you like? It's crazy, right? Can, can you do this for me? Can you like give me the special penny so that like I can be rich? <laughs> it's a lot of money. Okay. It's it's a lot. It's ridiculous amounts. Yeah. Yeah, she might be doing it in, in pennies. You might have to divide that by a hundred. The point is it's a lot more than a hundred thousand okay? dollars. Oh yeah, that was how many pennies I would have. Right. Okay, it's a lot more. Just just go with me on that. It's like the, the standard typical business school example, the magic penny that doubles every day. Okay? Crap. It didn't really, didn't really print out very well, did it? You want me to get the one that you're looking at? Do we have a color one? Okay, well, can you see the lines? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, make them darker. What, this marker? Okay, so we're looking at this graph, okay? And this graph is costs versus gross profit. Right? What's gross profit? Anybody remember? Say profit before taxes. Profit before taxes. Profit before taxes. That's right. Also called net income. Okay. So we're looking at the costs of running these um, these different situations. You'll see there's four lines. Okay. The four lines are going to be best case cost, worst case cost. Best case net income, worst case net income. Okay? There's four lines. Makes sense, right? You can't really see the future. So you don't really know what your costs are going to be. But you can get a pretty good idea of the range, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Same thing with your expenses. Maybe... You have a flat tire next month, and you didn't think about that. Don't chase me. Okay, maybe you'll have, I don't know, to buy another gallon of paint or something. Okay? <laughs> so you don't know what your costs are going to be either. So you take a range, and you make all these crazy assumptions, which I also sent you a file that had like a billion numbers for pages upon pages. Okay, that was a, an actual study that I did for a company. Okay? You take the best case and the worst case, and you plot them against each other, okay? If your business has any chance of being profitable, at some point, the net income will be greater than, than the costs, right? Because otherwise, what's the point? If it's going to cost me $1.50 to make a dollar. Pointless, right Pointless business, right? But if I spend a dollar and I make a dollar fifty, that's a decent business, right? Mm -hmm. So we got to figure out at what point in this business do I start making money? Let's say you're the Frito Lay guy, okay? 
and you drive this big truck around getting six miles to the gallon, and all you sell is one bag of chips at every single place that you go to. Chances are you're going to spend more just on diesel than what you're making on these 50 cent bags of chips, right? Mm -hmm. On the other hand, let's say you're the Zephyr Hills guy and you're driving around a truck that probably gets four miles to the gallon. But at the end of the day, you delivered 300 bottles where each one you're making about $5. Pretty good deal. So where does the Zephyr Hills truck stop making money? Well, that's one of those things that we calculate using the what? Say the break even. Break even. Break even. That's right. Break even point. Okay? So let's pretend we're the water guy. So we're the water guy in our water truck. Okay? Here's our water truck full of water bottles. Okay? And here he is. Driving his water truck that doesn't have a windshield. Yeah, I was going to say, does he drive on the outside? Like... <laughs> right? right? And his water truck gets five miles to the gallon. Damn. Those are big, heavy trucks. Five miles to the gallon. He's paying $3 a gallon for diesel. Okay? In addition... Every single month, because they drive so many miles, he's got to swap out a tire, which is a $300 cost. Okay? Okay. $300. $300 of maintenance. Let's just say it's a tire every month for this truck. In addition, we got to pay the guy that drives the truck. Okay, and let's suppose we don't pay him squat, we pay him $8 an hour, he works 40 hours a week, okay, <laughs> whatever girl, okay. so he makes 8 bucks an hour to drive this truck around, one month has 4.3 weeks, okay, So how much is he costing us to drive the truck around? He's driving 40 hours a week. Mm -hmm. Do you need to just um, schedule your next one? Or? Huh? Um, how much is he costing us? I'm so big in the just calling. You have a great right. day. Thank you very much. Did you stay for the accounting class? It sounds pretty interesting, but I got it on. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so where am I? How okay. much are we paying this driver to okay, drive? $8 an hour. $8 an hour. How much are we paying him every month? In a four or four week Because how are we going to do this break even thing? We've got to calculate how much our costs are and how much our income is, right? So we're paying him $8 an hour. He's working 40 hours a week. There's 4.3 weeks in a month. There's not really four in a month, okay? Remember, there's 52 weeks in a year. Mm -hmm. How much are we paying him on a monthly basis? Woman, you have your fancy calculator. How much? Do you agree with what she says? 40 times 8 hours, 40 times 8, times 4.3. I agree. You agree with that? Okay, there's. Whenever you see all these units, the easiest way to figure that out is using this thing called unit analysis that you learn in, in uh, engineering. Okay? 40. Hours per week. Okay, now you got to cancel out because we want to eventually get to dollars, right? So, how many weeks in a month? Well, there's 4.3 weeks in a month. So, that cancels out the week. He's getting, sometimes, he's getting $8 per hour. $8 per hour. That makes the hour go away. So what's left? 
40 times 4.3 times 8 dollars, which is what we wanted. We wanted dollars. Okay? So how much are we paying them? 1376. 1376. That's what we're paying them gross, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, but wait a minute. Uncle Sam wants me to pay 7.45% on top of that Seven called point FICA, right? 7.45. 1376 for a month, right? Look, mm -hmm. the month didn't cancel out, right? So it's that per month. Okay? But Uncle Sam wants 7.45%. Of FICA, who remembers what FICA is? Okay. It's the Federal Income Something Something Allowance Act. Okay? It basically is your Social Security Administration plus your Medicare. So and the employer has to pay 7.45% as of this year. So how much additional are we paying? 103. Round enough. Do you agree with that, Michelle? We're going to do the 1376 times 0 0.0745. Or 7.45 divided by 100. Or 7.45 divided by 100. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? So it would be 1376 times 7.45 divided by 100, which is how much? 103, round, it rounded up to 103. Okay, 103 bucks. We, we got to give Uncle Sam for, bastard. for him driving around. But he really only makes 12.73 an hour a month. Oh no, that's what I got to pay him. But you're right, he's making 13.76 minus 103 minus the federal withholding, which is typically about 15 percent. Yeah, he's only making. He's only making about uh, $1,100 a month, okay? Which, by the way, isn't that far from reality, just so you know. Oh, I know. Okay, all right. So that's what he's making. But I don't care what he's making. I only care about what it's costing me. Mm -hmm. What else do I have to pay for, guys? Yeah. I, already, I got diesel. I got maintenance on the truck. What's another big cost that's going to be involved? How about the truck itself? The truck, the oil. Well, yeah, but that's, you know, whatever. But I got to pay a monthly payment to the truck company, right? To the, the Kevin Minion guy that sells trucks. Mm -hmm. Okay, a truck like that, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of $65,000, probably borrowed for about five years. So he's probably paying somewhere in the neighborhood of $1,500 a month for that truck. Okay? So truck payment... Is another fifteen hundred dollars per month. Okay, let me get my colors now. I need my colors. The guy was in here. So I had to do everything in black. I need this black color. <laughs> okay, so he's paying fifteen hundred dollars a month for the actual truck. Right, that's going to be an expense. That's going to be an expense. This is going to be an expense. This is going to be an expense. And how much are we paying in diesel? Well, we don't know. We got to know how much he drives every day, right? So let's say he drives about 200 miles a day. Okay? So again, we're going to do the whole canceling thing. 300 miles per day. How many days in a month? Depends. Depends, I know, right? Months suck. Uh, we'll say 30. 30 and a half. 30 and a half. That's right. Because it's 365 days for 12 months, right? So, whatever. Let's just call it 30. Make it easier. 30 days per month. Okay, so that makes a day go away. But we still got to convert from miles to what, guys? No, to dollars, right? We need to know how much we're spending. Well, how many miles per gallon does he get? 
he gets five. But miles is on top here, right? So we want to put five miles per gallon, right? That makes a miles cancel. And how much are we paying for every one gallon? Three dollars. So now it's three dollars per gallon. Makes the gallons cancel. What do we have left? Money dollars per month, which is what we want. Yeah. So how much are we paying in dollars per month? Multiplying. Uh, no, oh, there's five is being divided. Okay. Thirty-six sixty. Like over three thousand dollars, right? Over thirty-six hundred dollars. Okay. So we're paying thirty-six sixty in fuel. Okay, which is an expense. So in this mythical water company. How much does it cost to run that truck for one month? Just shy of 7000 Our monthly expenses are going to be truck, maintenance, yeah. fuel, driver, Taxes, anything else we left out? Probably, but not for this example. Right? How much is the truck? Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. How much is the maintenance? Three hundred. How much is the fuel? Thirty six sixty. How much is the driver? Thirteen seventy six. How much is the tax? One hundred three. What's our total cost? Sixty nine thirty nine. Okay. Now, if we were doing this for real, we would do a best case scenario where we're getting the fuel cheaper, the truck is making a little bit better mileage, okay? Um, the truck, we got a better deal at the, for the truck. So instead of paying $1,500, maybe we're paying $1,300, okay? And maybe he does his route with less miles. Okay? And then we do a worst case scenario where the gas is more expensive, mm -hmm. the truck is more expensive, he drives more miles, two tires blow out each month, and so on and so forth. The whole point is you want to take the best that will never happen and the worst that should never happen. And you know that reality is going to be somewhere in the middle. Okay? Now, if I list a whole bunch of expenses and then I'm going to list a whole bunch of incomes, what does that look like? What was the very first financial statement that we talked about? Oh, close. What was the very second one? Income statement, right? Because the balance sheet is what? How much I owe versus how much I own. A break-even point is not that. A break-even point is, according to our little graph here, is how much comes in and how much comes out, which is what the... What sheet tells you? Income statement, right? Mm -hmm. Profit and loss. So what we're essentially doing is making a profit or loss for a future that doesn't yet exist. Because we're trying to decide whether or not it's going to be a good idea to start the water delivery business. So here's our expenses. Now, we're going to... Get some money coming in, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. We charge us $7.69 for each and every bottle that they deliver. Okay? $7 and what? $7.69 is what they charge us. So, we know what our costs are going to be for our water truck. So now, we have expenses on one side of the 
And now we need to do income. Income statement, and then we have income. And you're just trying to have revenue. Income. I said income. I know, but that thing says revenue. Right. And I'm not going to listen to it anymore. I'm only listening to you. <laughs> All right. So, now, reality is income comes from revenue, right? Once you take away the expenses. But, okay, so in the income statement, we always have one section, which is what? Revenue. And we have another section, which is what? Expenses. Expenses. And the bottom line is? The bottom line. Income. Right? Yep, good or bad. Good or bad. So now we're going to figure out income. In order to figure out what our income is going to be, we got to figure out what our revenue is going to be. Because we know what our expenses are going to be. So. Seven dollars and sixty-nine cents per bottle delivered. Okay. How much do you think they actually pay for each and every bottle? Probably like two dollars. Yeah. Maybe, probably less than that. Okay, when I was a Wendy's manager when I was 15 years old, I was the shift manager. I know, right? Woo, big career move. I was the Wendy's shift manager. I was my first ever interview with Wendy's, and I was that shit. <laughs> He's like, why do you want to work for Wendy's? I need money. I need money. That's not a good answer. Why do you want to get into the food business? I need money. I need money. <laughs> I was 15 years old. I worked for Wendy store number nine. Of the entire world. The ninth store. Wow. Yeah. A large Coke we sold at that time for 69 cents. I think now it's like a dollar fifty, right? Dollar ninety? What is it? Like two fifty. Oh my god. It was sixty-nine cents for the large coke. Our entire cost for the cup, the water, the soda, and the electricity to make the ice was two and a half cents. <laughs> okay, two and a half cents. The biggest cost of that was the actual cup, mm, yeah. which was like it's one and a half cents. Expensive. Yeah. So we sold for 69 cents what cost us two and a half cents. I bet you they're not paying more than a dollar for each bottle of wine. Okay, so we'll go with a dollar. We'll go with a dollar, okay? So let's say that they're COGS, right? Remember mm -hmm. COGS? What's COGS? The cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold. And here the only COG is the bottle and the water when the bottles come back to them. Right? They reuse them. They reuse them. So the COGS is going to be $1 per bottle. And of course the delivery cost is going to be what we already came up with, right? But that's not dependent on bottles, it's dependent on month. Because one's a fixed cost and one's a variable cost. This is a variable cost. It depends on how many bottles we sell. Mm -hmm. This are fixed costs because it's the same whether he sells one bottle or a million bottles, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So how much is our gross margin? Remember the gross margin? Remember we take the pie. 69. All right, we take the pie, we subtract cogs, mm -hmm. we get our gross margin. Mm -hmm. Right? So, what's our gross margin for every bottle that we deliver? 669. What is it, guys? 669. Oh. Do you agree with that? Yes. How'd you get it? <laughs> The bottles oh. delivered. So just the minus the cogs. Right. It's six dollars and sixty-nine cents. Yeah, six dollars and sixty-nine cents. Okay, say that. Six sixty-nine. That's what she said. She said six sixty-nine. Yeah. Sixty-nine? Okay. So it's <laughs> no, because we usually dirty minded people. <laughs> You're worse. <laughs> <laughs> no, the gross margin is thank you. Minus. No, it just got me confused because usually we do something like that in 
pennies. Pennies. <laughs> so our gross margin is six dollars and sixty-nine cents per bottle. Bottle. <laughs> okay. Now you understand me why gross margin is an important number to calculate? Because once we know what the gross margin is, now we need to know how many bottles we need to sell to cover the what? The fixed costs. We always carry the we always cover the variable costs because we always sell for more than what we purchase for, right? If we buy low, we sell high. Right? So the cogs are always taken care of. Yes? Mm -hmm. So what do we need to take care of? The shit that's not cogs. Okay? And what's not cogs in this pie? Holy shit. Um, the U.S. government. The government. Income. What else? And overhead. We want some income, mm -hmm. but we got to pay cogs, we got to pay the government, we got to pay our overhead. Right? All of this is that's just overhead. That's just overhead, right? Because this government is our taxes, not the taxes for the driver, the company's taxes, yeah. right? Yeah. We need to sell a whole shit ton of bottles. We need to sell a shit load of bottles, most probably, right? So six sixty nine a bottle. Our fixed costs. What was our fixed cost? How much? Sixty nine thirty nine. Six nine thirty nine. What? Say dollars, dollars per month. Per month. Right. So that's in order to cover this. Right. Our truck. Our maintenance. Okay. We had to. We have an overhead of sixty nine thirty nine. Well, so how many bottles do we need to sell? 1,037. So again, we use unit analysis, but thank you for jumping. I love that. <laughs> okay. So, how do we do this? Well, we know we get six sixty nine per bottle. We know we got to cover $69.39 per month, right? What we really want to end up with is bottles per month, right? <laughs> Spread the joy. Yeah. <laughs> so there's 369. Yeah. So you're thinking about it, huh? My goodness. Let's just circle them to make them more obvious. <laughs> oh, God, there's more than three. No, there's five. There are? Do you see it? Where's the other 69? I have to come up there and circle it. Yeah. There's another 69. There's 69. <laughs> wow. Desperate times. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Desperate times. You gotta you gotta back up some I gotta gotta, gotta get a picture. Desperate times comes desperate times. We wanna end up with bottles per month, right? Pretty simple. We're gonna put six sixty nine per bottle. Okay, so we know bottle is going to be on the top, right? Because we want bottle on the top. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and it's $6.69 for every bottle. Don't worry, okay. I'm getting it. All right. We want to cancel out the dollars, but we know that the fixed cost was... $69.39 per month, right? So the dollars cancel, and we're left with bottles over month, which is what we want. So that works out too. Mm -hmm. so Should be a little over a thousand bottles a month. 1037. So 1037. Bottles per month. Bottles per month. So if you don't sell 1,037 bottles per month, 
We cannot pay that driver. Or the truck. Or the taxes. Or the fuel. We're screwed. You're screwed. Right? Now, our driver guy, he worked 4.3 weeks, five days a week. Mm -hmm. So 4.3 weeks, five days a week. That's how many days he's going to work in a month, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what, 21 and a half days? Mm -hmm. Okay. So on average, he works 21 and a half days per month. So how many bottles does he have to deliver every single day in order to make this truck and this water company profitable? Profitable, it's going to have to be like 60. <laughs> but to break even, be, well, not even break even, you still have to pay Uncle Sam. Yep, you still got to pay Uncle Sam. For to, to get the, to pay overhead to be Break even with Which overhead. Which is how we calculate break even, by the way, because if we make zero money, we don't have to pay Uncle Sam anything. Correct. So okay. our break even point is 48 bottles per of water day. a day. Okay, so you're going to take the 10. Okay, so break seven. even. And divided by 21.5. Is going to be 1,037. Bottles per month, right? Mm -hmm. And we know that there's 21.5 days per month, right? So one month is 21.5 days. And we'll get bottles over days, which is what we want. As a month cancels out, so we take 10.37 divided by 21.5, and he ends up delivering what, like 50 something bottles a day? 48. So 48 bottles per day. If he works eight hours a day, he's got to deliver six hours and six bottles an hour, where that truck is not going to break even. I don't think they want to listen to you anymore. <laughs> if he delivers exactly 48 bottles a day, how much income does our company make? Which means we also pay zero taxes, right? If he delivers 47 bottles a day, oh. <coughs> but if he delivers he 49, we make no, we might, some we'll, money. We'll be able to go buy a Coke. <laughs> right, we'll be able to go buy a Coke. <laughs> some Coke. Some Coke, yeah. Well, I mean, if it delivers 49, that's essentially one bottle extra per day. That's 20 bottles extra per month. You're making six bucks a bottle, so you're making $120 in a month. Which sounds like crap until you have a thousand trucks out there. How many trucks do you think Nestle has out there? A lot. Probably 5,000 trucks. If they're making $100 per truck per month, but you have 5,000 trucks, you're making a half a million dollars a month. Which is why Nestle borrows the money to buy that truck. Because they could pay $60,000 for a truck, right? But how many trucks would they end up with? One. But if they pay $1,500 per month with those very same $60,000, how many trucks would they end up with? Thanks for calling Fox with my help you. 40. Okay, and the patient's name? Okay, one, sec one second, let me... Okay, so then we follow that. What did you say the last one was? So I can pay Kevin... 
$60,000 for one truck. Or I could pay Kevin $60,000 divided by $1,500 per truck. And how many is that? And I can get 40 trucks. That makes more sense. Now, if I have one truck rolling around, how much money am I going to make? Let's say $100 a month. $100. But if I have 40 trucks rolling around, or $1,000 a month. So, $100 versus $4,000, is it worth paying the interest on the trucks? Yes. Yes. Get it? Okay, that's the end. Questions? Sure? Because you're going to explain it to Diana when she gets off the phone. On the strength, I'm really bad with like figuring out what the signs are supposed to be. Like with board problems, when they're not there, I'm like lost. So well, that's why we use unit analysis and engineering. Yeah. You put the units there, and it helps you through the thing. Sometimes in engineering, you'll end up with 15 intermediate steps to get to your answer. You'll forget in between. So you do this. You do equalities. And we know that one month is equal to $69.39 in this case. And one bottle is equal to $669. So if these things are equal, so I multiply them by one, right? Yeah. Okay, so explain it to her. The Kevin thing? Yeah, why it is that Nestle wants to borrow the money for the trucks, even though they can afford to buy it. Because 60, can I, can I finish? Yeah, whenever you're done. The valve really fast, yeah. yes. Whenever you're done. By the way, we're looking to rent an office. Yeah. Same idea, right? Mm -hmm. We could buy a building. We have enough cash. Why? Why? So we need another building. I can take the same cash and rent five buildings. Yeah. So is it worth paying the interest of the landlord? Absolutely. If I can sell a thousand bottles a month for each truck. Yeah. Continue. Okay, so explain it to her. All right. At least you gotta get up there because the camera can't see you. Hey, it's part of uh, this the whole management guy. thing. Training you guys to be management. And you gotta stand up and talk to people. It's this part. Yeah, but I already wrote it, so that's cheap. Can <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I write it again? You have to explain it. Then I have to explain it. Okay. So. So in other words, can I, can I ask if I'm correct on this one? Ask her. Okay. So Michelle, mm -hmm. the reason why we do not buy the one truck for $60,000 is because then we will only have the one truck. Yes. But if we pay And how much would we make if we had one truck? Nothing. $120 a month, yeah. I'd say. Yeah, 120 bucks, yeah. But instead, we get a loan and we purchase... A bunch of trucks. For the so, same amount. So, for the same amount. So, if I take in, so instead of paying 60000 for one, we can pay 1500 a month for 40. for 40 trucks instead of just and for the same amount. $400. Or not $400. $4,000. $4,000. Yeah. I think that's a much better idea. But it's yeah. $100. Michelle, thank you for explaining it. It's $100 per truck, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And here we get 40 trucks out of the deal. Mm -hmm. $4,000. So we get four thousand dollars instead of a hundred and twenty dollars. For hundred and twenty bucks, you're not going to push down sixty grand. Mm -mm. But four thousand dollars a month. How much is that at the end of the year? Fifty grand. Second year, a hundred grand. Third year, a hundred and fifty grand. And after five years, those trucks are already going to be yours. 
But and wait, you're not going to have to pay that because there's more. You can, but wait, you can purchase another forty. But wait, there is more. You can purchase another forty after that. Wait a minute, because here's here's a part that I hoped you guys would catch, but you didn't. In the expenses, didn't we not already include the truck payment? We did. So yes. then, so wait a minute. Right off. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> so then, we actually spend our sixty thousand. No. So add that money. It's already being taken care of by our bottle sales. Mm -hmm. So now, money. here's our two choices. Drop down 60000 in exchange for a truck and make $100 a month. Or keep the 60000 Or keep the 60000 Get 40 trucks and make 4000 a month. What did I do with my sixty thousand? I didn't do anything with my sixty thousand. Exactly. there. It just sits there. Collect. No. No. Okay, that was the main crux of this. That sixty thousand did not go away. You still have it. You still have it. However, you can't use it because the bank is going to want you to make sure that you have enough cash. Sitting in a safe so that you can pay the 40 payments that month. So, okay. You can't use it. But did it go away? No, no. No, it's still yours. So, I took how much of my money to make this 4000 a month? It's Zero. Oh, zero. It's zero. Zero. Big fat goose egg. Big fat goose egg, because where's my 60000 In the bank. In my safe or in the bank. And that is why companies invest in loans. That's why. Not to buy a shiny red Ferrari. Unless your business is renting Ferraris. You know? <laughs> hey, excuse me. Do you know what time it is? No. 5.30. Okay. It's actually 5.30. It's six. What do you want from me? Yeah. Perhaps these people like to go through. Well, then they would say, hey, fat ass, get done. Listen, I didn't work three days this week. I'm not going to complain. And she showed up at like 3 p.m. No, I've been here since 11. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll see. How do you know? You're a minute. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Friday? Like yeah, but see, they're going to be yeah, helping us with the whole break even thing for Orlando. Book now. That's fine. Um, That's fine. Maybe. Crap, how do you turn this thing off? I don't know. But now you have her yelling yeah. at you on it. 